While driving his son to school for the first time, the father notices the boy's anxious expression. Sensing his son's unease, he gently inquires about his feelings. The boy, nervously adjusting his backpack straps, questions, Dad, how many years do I have to attend school? Until you reach 18, the father responds, offering a comforting smile. The boy nods quietly, his thoughts filled with uncertainty. Upon reaching the school's entrance, the boy hesitates before making a request. Daddy, could you please hug my puppy for me? Of course, son, the father agrees, aware of the boy's affection for his furry companion. Surprising his father with another plea, the boy adds, Can you also hug mommy for me? With a touch of sadness in his tone, the father replies, You can hug her when you return home. Tears gather in the boy's eyes, prompting his father to offer words of reassurance. Don't worry too much. Everything will be fine. Go ahead now, he encourages. Wiping his tears away, the boy gathers his courage to ask one final question, his voice quivering with emotion. Dad, you'll remember to pick me up when I turn 18, right? Arthur, a lively 75-year-old who's been playing golf every day since he retired 15 years ago, comes home one day feeling down. I'm giving up golf, he sadly tells his wife. My eyesight is too poor. I can't see where the ball goes. His wife understands and suggests taking her 85-year-old brother, who has perfect eyesight, for help. Arthur doubts his brother-in-law's ability due to his age. He's 85. He won't be much help. Arthur says, but his wife insists, pointing out her brother's sharp vision despite his age. Reluctantly, Arthur agrees, and they head to the golf course together. After Arthur takes a swing, he asks his brother-in-law if he saw where the ball went. Of course, his brother-in-law confidently replies, but then he admits, I don't remember. Despite the mix-up, Arthur and his brother-in-law enjoy their time together, showing that age doesn't stop them from having fun. They joked about how the middle finger is halfway to forming a peace sign. They found humor in the idea of butts being like fancy wrapping for not-so-great content. They thought it was strange that bathrooms often serve as both places for brushing teeth and using the toilet. They discussed how winners of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire might not end up millionaires after taxes. They marveled at the human skill of beatboxing, likening it to a machine's job. They posed a hypothetical question about whether they'd accept a large sum of money in exchange for spending time with random people. They chuckled at the thought of pirates with eye patches possibly struggling with sword fighting. They imagined the stress of being a truck driver responsible for transporting delicate cargo-like eggs. They stumbled upon a humorous trick involving typing certain phrases to generate peculiar emojis on their phones. They laughed at the irony of wearing glasses to convey intelligence despite it being a solution for vision impairment. They found amusement in the idea of baby clothing having pockets, despite babies having no need for them. In conclusion, they recognized the importance of possessing both knowledge and intelligence to navigate life successfully. A man phoned his wife from his workplace with great excitement, announcing, Darling, I've been invited on a fishing trip to Canada with my boss and his friends. It's a week-long getaway, and I'm hoping it'll give me the chance to secure that promotion I've had my eye on. Could you please pack enough clothes for a week and set out my fishing gear? I'll swing by the house to pick everything up on my way. Though the wife sensed something suspicious, she trusted her husband and fulfilled his request, even including his new blue silk pajamas. When the husband returned home the following weekend, he appeared a bit weary, but content. His wife eagerly inquired about the fishing trip. With a grin, the husband recounted, It was fantastic! We caught plenty of salmon, some bluegill, and even a few swordfish. But hey, why didn't you pack my new blue silk pajamas as I asked? In response, the wife playfully retorted, I did pack them. They're in your fishing box. Remember to share the laughter with your friends. An atheist is strolling through the woods when he hears a rustling behind him. 
He whirls around to find a gigantic bear glaring right at him. Panic seizes him and he takes off running, with the bear hot on his heels through the forest. As he dashes, the atheist's energy wanes, but he knows stopping means certain doom at the jaws of the hungry bear. Just when he thinks he can't run another step, he collapses from exhaustion, gazing up at the sky and cries out, Oh God, if you're real, please turn this bear into a Christian. In a miraculous moment, the bear halts in its tracks. The atheist peers cautiously and sees the bear slowly sinking to its knees, clasping its paws together and murmuring, Thank you, Lord, for this meal we are about to receive.